First uh, case of uh, Wuhan uh, novel coronavirus patient in Singapore. He has been uh, isolated and warded in the uh, uh, Singapore General Hospital. In the latest, Singapore has raised the coronavirus outbreak alert to orange. This comes after three more Singaporeans were found to be infected. Now, the Dogs Gone Orange announcement also sparked food and grocery buying sprees across Singapore over the weekend. We'll have a fairly major... She developed serious complications and eventually succumbed to the disease uh, after 26 days in ICU. News just in, the multi-ministry task force has just announced its most stringent measures yet to combat the spread of COVID-19. It's the last night where bars and clubs are allowed to be remaining open and the scene is quite different. Starting tomorrow, they have to be closed until April 30th. It's the first day of circuit breaker measures in Singapore. Workplaces are shut except those in essential services. knowledge about the coronavirus is changing all the time and as countries start to learn more, our policies need to change accordingly. Additional control measures have been implemented to reduce the risk of further transmission of the disease. We will therefore extend the circuit breaker for four more weeks beyond the 4th of May, in other words, until the 1st of June. Then, provided we have brought the community numbers down, we can make further adjustments and consider easing some measures. Travellers here can fly to China under the Singapore-China Fastlane Agreement which was established yesterday. For a start, the new scheme will apply only to business and official travel. And we say the SDA will never give up. The PAP is seeking a clear mandate to lead Singapore through the storms ahead. What we are trying to deny the PAP isn't a mandate. What we're trying to deny them is a blank check. I'm 
also pleased to report that we have both both sides have settled the arrangements for the reciprocal green lane as well as for the, what we call the periodic commuting arrangement. So all the details have been settled. This basically enables uh, business travel to resume with appropriate precautions, as well as the needs of both Singaporeans and Malaysians who have long-term uh, employment passes, work passes respectively, be able to work for a period of up to three months and then go back. The launch of the travel bubble arrangement between Singapore and Hong Kong will be delayed to next year. The Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore said today that both countries decided to defer the start given the number of local unlinked cases in Hong Kong is still high. Making a very special delivery, the Singapore Airlines Jumbo Jet arrived at Changi Airport at 7.36pm this evening, carrying the first ever batch of COVID-19 vaccines for Singapore and Asia. A lot of people have been looking forward to you know bigger celebrations. Uh, we've all been cooped up for quite a long time. We've had a lot of restrictions uh, through you know the entire year. So it's nice to end the year with a bigger, more festive, more celebrative season. Rolling up a sleeve, applying an alcohol swap, and finally the jab. Just like that. Singapore kick-started its national COVID-19 vaccination program this morning on December 30th. Three healthcare workers at the National Centre for Infectious Diseases, or NCID, were the first to receive the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. perhaps one year, maybe one and a half years from now, I don't expect major changes. We will largely still be in the midst of a pandemic because even if the majority of people in Singapore are vaccinated, it's impossible for the world to be vaccinated by this year. Over a four-year time frame, five years, who knows exactly when, but at some point the pandemic will pass, surely. No pandemic is forever.